if you wear a poppy on your lapel in November in remembrance of Canadian veterans and their sacrifices, you may already have some idea about the Royal Canadian Legion. They are the keepers of the poppy campaign. But in towns and cities across Canada, the Legion is often also a physical space, a, a building, a meeting place, originally just for veterans. And some are struggling to stay afloat. Joining us now on how the Legion is adapting as times change, we welcome in Gatineau, Quebec, Serge Durflinger, Professor of History at the University of Ottawa, specializing in military history and the history of veterans. And in Windsor, Ontario, Tim Copeland, President of Branch 255 of the Royal Canadian Legion and a veteran himself. And we are delighted to welcome both of you to our program tonight. Let's just, for those who are uh, not as up on this issue as you two are, we're going to put a little background in place here. Uh, Sheldon, if you would, let's have this graphic up. The Royal Canadian Legion was established in 1925. It's almost 100 years old. At the time, Canada had something like 584,000 World War I vets. It is this country's largest veteran support and community service organization, Legion Halls being their independently run branches. In 1984, they boasted more than 600,000 members. Membership has now dropped to fewer than 250,000. And 75% of them are veterans and their families, but they've since opened up membership to serving soldiers, RCMP and police officers, Coast Guards, and as of 1998, any Canadian citizen 18 and older. There are currently more than 1,300 Legion branches across the country, about a third of them here in the province of Ontario. And as of 2018, 80% of members were over the age of 55. Okay, Serge, let's get into the background here. What was the initial purpose of Canadian Legion halls to start with? Well, um, clearly it was an opportunity for veterans to band together and share common experiences. Um, their fighting in the trenches or just service during the First World War created a community and they wanted to establish in their hometowns a sense of commonality. And also because there were so many veterans as a percentage of the male population, military age male population, they also constituted a very big chunk of uh, communities large and small across the country. What were they like in their heyday? Well, certainly in the 20s and 30s, uh, they were places um, where um, veterans could uh, not only be together and reminisce, or, but they also looked towards the future, how to better their communities or how to fight um, for greater pension rights or opportunities for veterans, especially during the Great Depression. And then after the Second World War, this whole new generation of veterans picks up the metaphorical torch and then carries it forward to ensure that veterans were in a position not only to be together and support one another, but also maintain their role as pillars of the community and ensure that government did not um, neglect their needs. Tim, let's find out more about your situation. When did you join your legion? I joined in 1969. How come? Well, uh, tradition of my, my father was a Second World War veteran, D-Day veteran. As a member of the Legion here, he was one of the longest serving members until he passed away. He was a life member. Uh, my brother is a Legion member. My grandfathers were Legion members, and it's I followed in their footsteps. And how many members did your branch have in 1969 when you joined? We had nearly 2,000 at that time wow. when I joined. Okay, and how many today? We have about 480. Hmm. And what do you think of that state of affairs? Well, it's, it's, it's sad, but it's due to attrition. You know, we only have five World War II veterans left in our branch, uh, about eight Korean vets, uh, a few Afghan, a few uh, other veterans. They're just, they're, they're passing away. COVID hit. We were closed for nearly to get those members back where we've reached out to them we've made phone calls they're slowly trickling back but will never be the same serge when did membership problems the likes of which uh, tim has just described when did they start to become a problem well it's actually a very interesting question because after the first world war most veterans did not join the legion in the interwar period we're talking about seventy-five thousand canadian veterans from more than half a million 
Um, and so it was never all veterans, but certainly um, there was a gradual uh, increase naturally after the Second World War. And so you don't really um, notice any significant decline in the veterans population in Legion branches. In fact, very many new Legion branches were added in the post-45 period. So it isn't really um, until Tim was, uh, was saying it's, it's really attrition and... Um, and the good news is it's also the absence of any significant conflicts uh, in which we were involved. Uh, and so it's certainly um, a bad news, good news situation and if, you, if you look at it that way. Tim, as you look at your own personal circumstances, do you feel that your branch can hang in there? Yes, we can. We, we are doing very well. Since COVID finished, uh, our members are back. We're, we're getting more members in. We have a lot of functions going on in the branch, and the community supports us, and we support the community with, with our donations to our, all the different organizations that we support. Uh, we're we're doing okay, and I we're working hard. We have a great executive here, and uh, we're even going to get better. Okay, good to hear. Serge, how about, uh, let me ask you about the one in uh, Verdun, Quebec, which is your hometown. How's it doing? Yeah, it's my hometown. I was very close to so many of those, uh, the members of the Legion, including veterans, including a handful from the First World War, long departed. So the truth is that number four branch, which is a very old branch founded in 1919, um, and was, I believe, the largest branch in Canada. At one point, I believe almost 5,000 members. I might be off just a little bit, but enormous. Well, there you have it. Uh, they're having financial problems, membership problems. They're now talking about merging with a neighboring branch. Um, it's not clear exactly what type of community or municipal support they're going to obtain, if any. And I think it's also a function of a changing demographic and a changing population base. And the veterans themselves now um, remain a cogent and uh, discernible group, but small, very small. So I don't know what's going to happen. If number four branch uh, has to merge, it'll be a real historic loss to the history of the Legion. Hmm. Now, you say it's a demographic change. How, how is that having an impact on things? Right. So they're a younger population, um, a population that is um, perhaps not as connected to the war. Um, you know, First World War veterans' children are now also uh, pretty old. Uh, Second World War children are often retired. Uh, and so I just feel that the population is not the same that would be required to maintain the tempo of interest uh, in the community and membership from the community that would otherwise be the case in a successful um, Legion branch going forward. Tim, I appreciate the fact that the Legion Hall that you hang out at is doing okay and, is, and, and you feel good about its future, but we heard the last president of the Legion talk about a membership cliff that too many of the places were encountering and heading for danger. That was another expression that was used. How concerned are you that we are going to see branches all across the province of Ontario and the rest of the country start to close down in the years ahead? I can see that happening. It's uh, We've had two in our city alone that have closed up in the last the last year. We just had uh, a, a branch just amalgamate with another. And like I say before, it's, it's the attrition and it's hard to get the young people to come in in the Legion. Uh, there's a stigma that the Legion Hall is a bunch of old veterans sitting around smoking cigarettes and drinking beer. That's not that's not the case. We have so many young uh, young folks coming in, are concerned about the Legion, and they are grandchildren and great-grandchildren of veterans, and that's, that's the people that we're reaching out to. We try to reach out to our young folks in the city, but they seem to have other things that they want to do. The, the 22-year-olds, the 23-year-olds, they want to go party with their own age groups. They don't want to be coming in and wear... You know, they're dealing with people that are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and it's it makes it hard on all of us. But uh, you're right. The legions are in trouble. A lot of the small towns are in trouble. Serge, could you follow up on that? Do you think there are some unfair stereotypes out there about what goes on at the Legion Hall? Oh, undoubtedly. It's pejorative. I mean, these, these veterans 
whether they're from the wars, uh, first, second, Korea, or any of our other wars, have always, since the beginning, used the Legion as an advocacy place, a place for meeting. And also, the branches are enormously important to their communities. They, they offer many, many services, and it's also a venue for many activities and events. The notion that being a veteran and a member of the Legion equates to being someone who just likes to hang around on a Saturday, play darts and drink beer is ludicrous. Um, and it's, it flies in not only in the face of reality, but it's a little insulting to our veterans. Well, tell me this then, Serge. Uh, I mean, for example, you talk about the next generation not signing up as much as previous generations. You know, 40,000 Canadians contributed to our, uh, the war in Afghanistan. What percentage of them do you think uh, have embraced the Legion movement? So, impossible to say. Um, however, I would bet that almost all of those veterans, to a man and woman... Uh, support the ideals for which the Legion exists. But um, it is also true that uh, they are smaller in number and times have changed. They might be some of the, um, you know, the demographic to which we've uh, both been noting. Uh, perhaps they are interested in other things. Perhaps technology and the rise of smartphones and technology in many other uh, domains, including uh, social media, might have made it easier for them to stay together in a way that is no longer necessary in a brick and mortar um, uh, location. Hmm. Tim, if I were to walk into the Legion Hall that you have spent uh, so much time at over the years in Windsor, as I walk in that front door, what am I gonna see? You're gonna see, if there's people here, you'll be greeted with open arms, we'll shake your hands, we'll invite you in, and we, we bend over backwards for new people coming in. So if you walk into our branch, you're going to be made to feel welcome. Uh, what about uh, the lighting? What about the amenities? What about the ambiance there? Talk about that, if you would. Well, we, we have many things going on here. We have, we have a, a room for darts. We have dart leagues here on Tuesday nights and Friday nights. We have a pool room where the folks come in. They play pool. It's open and it's free of charge at any time. We have, during the week, we have four or five different uh, seniors groups that come in and play cards. It's bright. It's, it's, uh, it's a cheery place to come in. And it, it's, it's a fun place. And we have, we have meat draws on Saturday afternoons, and we fill the place, and we have a good time. And Saturday nights, we have a band playing, and they play all kinds of music from the 50s right up through to the, the uh, today's date. And it, it's, it's a fun place to come. And you're welcome at any time to walk in the front door. I'm going to take you up on that sometime, uh, just to let you know. We'd be more than welcome to have you. You know what, Tim? We were just in Windsor shooting a show a couple of weeks ago, and unfortunately, I didn't know about this place. And had I known, I definitely would have dropped in. But the next time I'm in town, I'm going to take you up on that. But let me ask you this. Um, men versus women. What's the ratio of men versus women there? I'd say we're 50-50. We... we... We do very well with both, yes. We have a, a great ladies auxiliary, many, many members there, but we have a lot of uh, female members of the branch. Okay, Serge, what you've just heard described, how typical is that? It's certainly my experience. Uh, the Verdun branch had its own building. It was unveiled by the Governor General uh, in the early 1930s, the Great War Memorial Hall. It was historic. Uh, it was emblematic of a veteran's experience. There was a maquette of the Vimy Memorial. Uh, there were uh, historic photographs, and there were wonderful people, many of whom I became very close to, and uh, people I miss a great deal. Now, you're the professor of history here, so I'm going to ask you this question. If more of these Legion Halls shut down, what are we going to lose? Well, um, history is about people. And the history of the Canadian people also includes the history of the people at war. And these are a part of the institutional memory of having served in the military, either in peace or in war. And not having that presence in the community means the extinguishing of an important reminder of a part of our history that uh, remains uh, foundational. And so the, the increasing uh, disappearance of Legion branches is the increasing disappearance of our history. Tim, can I get you to weigh in on that as well? If we lose more halls, what in effect are we losing? Cities and small towns, it's the center focus of the town. 
you're, you're losing a good part of your community because the Legion serves our communities. And unfortunately, if they close, those communities won't be served like they are today. Hmm. Is there anything you think could be done to fill that void if more of these halls do shut down? We as members of the Legion, we've got to get out there and we got to fight to keep them open. We got to, we got to bring people in, uh, get programs going to restore some of the older buildings that need repairs. And it's, it's, it's going to be a struggle, but uh, overall, I think we will do well. I think most branches will do well across the country. You know, Serge, the, the, you know, somebody wrote this book, gosh, Putnam was his last name, Bowling Alone about uh, the, the sort of disappearance of uh, a certain way of life across, uh, in his case, America. Um, you know, service clubs disappearing, bowling clubs disappearing. I is this just the inevitable flow of history, or do you think there's anything that can actually be done to save these things? Yeah, I, I actually, I'll, I'll opt for the inevitable flow of history. Times change, people change, activities change. Um, modernity um, has a significant impact on how people think and what they do. Uh, many of these things are dated, um, and newer generations have different habits and different expectations. So for these service groups, which are, remain very important to so many people, they might need to modernize, they might need to seek a greater sense of relevance in a modern world without necessarily yielding uh, the ideals for which they were originally um, um, organized. Um, and so, yes, I, I think that change uh, is inevitable in this respect. Well, Serge, I wonder if part of the problem is that other organizations, other newer organizations, have taken up some of the responsibilities that the Legion always felt they had to do. For example, you know, there's Wounded Warriors, there's True Patriot Love. Um, these are groups that are helping veterans. These are groups that are raising money for veterans' causes. Uh, to help those who are suffering from PTSD and so on, is part of the problem here that the Legion's place in the military world has been in some respects superseded and improved upon by newer and other organizations? Yeah, it's, it's certainly possible. Uh, there is overlap. Many of those organizations are very specific, however. Um, first of all, there's no, there are other veterans organizations outside of the Legion. Uh, and so the veterans have, have frequently had their own special interest uh, organizations without necessarily um, competing with the Legion, and many of them were members of the Legion as well. So it's not inconceivable, nor is it incompatible, that people could be members of more than one organization. And I think that should probably be encouraged. Hmm. Tim, how many days a week is the Legion Hall where you go in Windsor? How many days a week is it open with stuff to do? We're open seven days a week. I say we have functions going on every day. Now this weekend, we just did our remembrance service at our cenotaph. And last night we had our remembrance banquet. And, uh, we had over 100 people here, and 58 of those were veterans. So we're, we're open seven days a week, and there's something going on every day. Of the 58 who were veterans, any sense about what either wars they participated in or what their responsibilities in uniform were? Well, we had two of our gentlemen in last night. They are 100 years old. We celebrated uh, last month, the two of them. They're both Second World War veterans, and... The one gentleman is a past president of the branch, and he's, he's a vibrant part of our, our legion. And the other gentleman, he's the same. He's 100 years old, and they participate, and we're, we're, we're glad to have them. And the other veterans, a lot of them, they're on the executive here at the branch, and they participate in, in a lot of the things that go on here. So they are involved. Serge, let me give you the last word on this. Well, I was very glad to hear that. Um, in my hometown, uh, the, the memorial, which is a beautiful, beautiful memorial from the early 20s by a famous sculptor named uh, Coeur de McCarthy, it's a real work of art, right across the street from the Great War Memorial Hall, and then on the far side is the City Hall. And so the veterans had a pride of place, prominent in the community, and it was impossible for the mayor to look out, not to, to look out his window and not see the Legion and the memorial. And so I always found that uh, to be very important and a real centerpiece historically and today as well.
Wonderful. I'm going to ask our director, Sheldon Osman. Perfect. That's what I wanted to see. And I don't know if it's possible to get a look at those medals on Tim's chest, but um, boy, there we go. I love that shot. Love that shot. Tim, thank you very much. Serge, thank you very much. We're grateful to both of you for being on our program tonight and explaining why we need the Legion in the life of our country in the past, today, and going forward. All good wishes to you both. Thank, thank you very you. much. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.